Welcome back to Dino's Tech Coach Corner YouTube series. I'm Tiara Lustig, your host, and today I'm joined by Rochelle Denae Poth to talk about personalized learning in the remote classroom and as we go back to school. Personalized learning has come about as a really important instructional strategy during this time of remote learning. So we're talking with Rochelle about what it is, what it means in a remote setting, what it means in the classroom, and tactics she's found that work for her students to make learning more personalized during this time of remote learning. Before we jump in, I want to ask everyone to please subscribe to Dino's YouTube channel and don't forget to follow us on all of our social media channels so you don't miss a thing. We have some exciting things coming up in the next few weeks, so keep an eye out for those. But other than that, let's jump into the episode. Welcome back to Tech Coach Corner, everyone. I'm Tiara Lustig, your host, and today I am joined by Rochelle Denae Poth. Rochelle, would you mind giving a brief introduction to yourself before we get started? Yeah, so I am a Spanish and STEAM teacher. I uh, also have taught French before. I've been teaching at my school for a while, is what I like to say, and uh, also spend my time as a consultant. I'm also an attorney and uh, an author as well, so love learning. Awesome. Well, we love learning here on Tech Coach Corner. Um, I think today we want to dive into the topic of personalized learning. It's become something that's super important and engaging during this time of remote learning and making sure that students are receiving personalized instruction as well as providing personalized professional development to teachers um, throughout various districts. Would you mind giving your um, kind of take on personalized learning? What does it really mean? Why it's important? And then how you have kind of found success or, or what tactics you've used to personalize instruction in a remote setting? Yeah, it actually goes back, uh... I don't even know how many years at this point, but it's kind of like I started to do some different things in my classroom or different methods, and I didn't really know what they were called, you know, the names for them. I was just thinking about all of the students that were getting maybe the same worksheet or same activity and finding that some of my students were finishing sooner and some of them needed extra time. And so kind of working with that years ago, I started to use some different digital tools and would take my students to the, uh, the library or the computer lab and have them work just at their own pace, finding different activities that, that were kind of interesting to them or on topics that sometimes I would suggest to them just because they would say, I don't know where to start. And with personalized learning, it's, it's important to give students choices in how they're learning and how they're sharing what they're learning. And so, especially with remote learning, uh, with our schools having been closed for the end of the past school year, I found that I really was able to connect with my students, even though they weren't all able to join into my classroom, but having those spaces to connect with them. Now, it wasn't ideal. So if I flip back to my regular classroom, something that worked really well that I thought was great for personalized learning was doing things like um, station rotations. Because for me, when I started to do that, or even blended learning, giving students a chance to kind of work at their own pace, um, to have some choices in the tools that they're using. But whenever I started to use station rotations, I was finding that instead of me standing at the front of the room and, and teaching or talking at my class the whole time, I was able to move around and I really felt like I was teaching every single student every single day. And it was exhausting, but it was so worth it to be able to have those interactions, but also for students to kind of set their own goals and work through different activities at their own pace, but also having that, that support and those collaborations of their classmates as well. Definitely. I think that ties really, really well into blended and flipped learning. And I think one thing I've heard a lot with those strategies and personalized learning is when you have more time to walk around the classroom and have more time to interact with students, um, you create more of those personal connections as well as helping them with schoolwork, which really fosters those relationships, which right. I think is a huge benefit as well. Um, have there been any specific tactics that you've used during remote learning specifically to kind of personalize instruction now that we're not in the physical class? Classroom. Yeah, I and I had used these over the years uh, in my classroom, but then even just at the end of the school year, I went back to using things like choice boards or hyperdocs where my students could kind of work through at their own pace or choose, in the case of choice boards, decide how they wanted to kind of practice the content or whatever, whatever we were working on. So those were great options. And then even with project-based learning with my upper level Spanish students, giving them that chance to kind of focus on the Spanish language and the culture, but kind of deciding what it was they wanted to study, how they were going to get their information, and then being able to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations with them. 
but letting them kind of control like where the learning was taking them and what their next steps were. So it was great, great for them to have that opportunity, but also a really great learning experience for me because I could better understand what their interests were and then building those relationships. I mean, all of it, even though we weren't in that same physical classroom space, being able to kind of leverage these different tools that were out there and still connect and collaborate really made a difference. Definitely. And that personalization is so, so important. Um, so thank you so much for shedding some light on that, how you've found success with it. Um, would you mind uh, plugging anything that you have where people might connect with you if, if they want to learn further about personalized learning for you? Yeah, sure. So uh, Twitter, R-D-E-N-E-915, also on Instagram. And so anybody can reach out to me, send me a DM. Um, I have a blog site, which is the same, where I write and share some of the things I'm doing also for writing for publications like Getting Smart. But also I share out some guest blogs too on my site, just because there's so much out there and I love to know what everybody else is doing and to share their stories. So would definitely love to connect and hear how people are kind of preparing for the year and working on personalized learning. Yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty. So I think it's really important that we're all learning from each other during this time. Um, we will definitely put all of that below in the description so people can engage directly with you. Thank you, Rochelle, for being with us today. Yeah, thank you.